episode of Sports and Songs podcast. Andy, uh, it's January 5th, 2023. We're in season four, episode number eight. Tonight we're doing a songs edition, a music yes. edition podcast. Music only. And yes. how did you uh, survive with the snow? You know, we've got, what did I say? I saw 15, 16 inches, they said here, locally. Um, the Shadow Studios were butthole deep in snow, we'll just say, outside. We'll keep it at that. It kept coming. Yeah, it, uh, the, the streets and the neighborhoods, like on our, our driveway, the snow drift outside pile up is higher than I am. And I'm 5'10", so. It kept coming. So what we've got is a special for the listeners tonight, uh, we're going to cover not an album of the week. Nope. Uh, we could call it a genre, uh, perhaps. But we don't have a, a band on this week. We're going to cover the, the Metal Hall of Fame episode. Tonight's the episode of the Metal, Metal Hall of Fame. And why we're going to do this is uh, is this uh, is, is right here. There's there's information on right here on our show. That we're going to talk about this because, number one, a lot of people don't know about the Metal Hall of Fame, where it is, what they do, but they also have annual, you know, inductees. So let me get this tag here line out of here. Yeah, there we get go. Get that out of there. So this year, the reason we're doing the show in January is because that's when they do the annual inductions for the Metal Hall of Fame. Every January. This year, it's the 26th at the Canyon Club in Agora Hills, California. And so what they have is a celebrity red carpet event at 6, the awards gala at 8. So now this is not like, uh, Andy, you and I will ever be going to this. Maybe no. never. Maybe we're going next year. You know, you know, I don't we'll, know. but We'll see what Santa brings us, yes. It's something to be made aware of because that it actually uh, exists. And you'll be able to see uh, the tweets following this and, and, and things. It's the 6th annual. They just started this. They've got some sponsors at the top, um, you know, vodka and whatnot. But there's going to be performances, inductions, all-star jams, a meet and greet, you know, hosted by Eddie Trunk, Kathy Rankin uh, from Entertainment Personality, and everyone knows Eddie Trunk. Yep. This would be something, Andy, if we lived in the area, uh, we'd go to this. Oh, yeah, I would. And I now this kind of like a lot of other things. I don't think there's an actual Hall of Fame per se. There's a venue where they have it at, but I don't know if they actually got plaques and stuff. I'm not that familiar with it. I think that it might be a traveling thing, but you're right. Mm -hmm. I don't think there's a business that you go with. You can go see all of the plaques and things. Yeah. They'll probably have it down the road, but right now it's you got to go to the Canyon Club. And okay. they have inductions. They've got voting, and people make it into the Hall of Fame. It's still new. This is its sixth event. But what we'll do is try to do an educational show here is uh, on our show. Yep. Check this out. There's a number to call if you want to go. Uh, you can get the tickets online, metalhalloffame.org. Special performance by Adam and the Metal Hawks uh, are going to be, you know, playing. It's general admission only to see these guys. And like we said, Andy, it's not something we're going to go to. Uh, I, I don't know if it's something we'd ever, you know, fly to California to no. take this in. Maybe, it's not a bucket maybe, list. Maybe, but it's more of something in the metal, the metal heads out there, just to be aware of. That this is what they do, this is what they're uh, what they're what they're going with. Now, check this out. This year, here's the induct inductions inductees, and look at at the top, Twisted Sister. But they're being inducted by Steve Vai, Mike Portnoy, Lou Grant. Mike we Portnoy, he filled in on Twisted Sister after AJ Pirro passed away. Okay. And Steve Vai is just, I think him and he's just good friends with the band. And so do they have to have uh, a, per, a special person, you know, no. induct them? Or can they go up and just receive it themselves, you know? I think it's good. Them. And both yeah. of those guys are in the Hall of Fame already. They are. Okay. Yep. Okay. And you see at the bottom, Raven's going in. Um, yeah. You know, so some, some of these. Lou Graham they, did last week. We did Lou Graham last week, a uh, longtime foreigner. A lot of people say, you know, Lou Graham, why is he going into the Metal Hall of Fame? He, he was with Foreigner, a lot of kind of rock and roll, soft rock, maybe some heavy rock, but not metal. And, uh, and so you talked about that, but for the yeah. listeners that weren't on there, 
What are, what do you think about Lou Graham going yeah. into the metal whole thing? I, I mentioned it last week when we did the Foreigner album. Foreigner at that time, you could argue if they were hard rock. Um, are they metal? No, but I think metal, when you look at a lot of the other inductees in there, which we'll get to later, um, are just kind of like people who helped the industry also. He was an influence. Uh, was he a influence? Yeah, maybe he influenced a lot of guys who are metal and they're like, hey, Lou Graham should be in. We, we like him, you know. And we'll see that later on. I talked about some other inductees in there later on. He might fall under that category. Interesting. Now, the the next page I'm going to bring up here for the uh, for the viewers is this. The nomination. Now, this is to get into the hall. Not, not okay. you know, Anyone can attend. Anyone can go to attend. But if you want to be nominated to get into the Hall of Fame for metal, there's really three bullet points. That's it. Yep. At least 10 million retail units sold worldwide. That's not U.S. That's worldwide. 10 yep. million. So fair enough. Legendary status for a minimum of 20 years. How do you define legendary, Andy? I, you know, I think you have to be relevant for 20 years. You can't be, uh, oh, I filled in for this guy for a while, for five years. But then I just, a main part of their tour for 15, okay, that's only 15 years. Um, <clears throat> off the top of my head, like Jason Newstead of Metallica. Was he with Metallica for 20 years? Maybe he was, he was. I'm just using him as an example. Uh, guys like that, you were in a popular band for a while, but you were only there for 18 years or 12 years. So you might not go in. Because very few so bands are in. It's a lot of individuals. They don't want to have a, a one-hit wonder, uh, essentially. Right. They want to have long-standing people that have been in the in the industry. And I think that's yeah. they kept it vague like that on purpose, I think, because yeah. legendary can be taken many ways. But still, 20 years uh, that's some street cred. Right I don't there. think I would get Joe going in anytime soon, if you know what I'm saying. Yes. Now, the bottom one, Andy, it says contribution to a band, bands, the music industry, and societal involvement. And that's more, I think, where you get your Lou Graham, the contributions yeah. for all of these years for this job. Yeah. The music industry. And we'll see some other names will come up later on that, too, yeah. So that's what the uh, the nominees must meet. You know, they call it strict criteria and guidelines. Now, I know that's the nominations that come in. And I think in the past they've had four to six bands every year go in. Um, is there a – could they have seven or eight? Um, or could they only have one or two? You know, I don't know uh, what the nominating process is to as far as the voting. Right. I think it's – when I look at the list, so there's been a handful of guys a year, it seems like. You know, it's not like the Major League Baseball, um, you know, Hall of Fame where it's uh, it's all strictly numbers. You do the vote, and if you pass, you get to the next level, and if you don't, you have to wait a number of years to get in on the uh, the older crowd, you know, the seniors or something. But uh, yeah, it's very interesting. You know, Major League Baseball, you have to be out of the, you know, you're retired, and you have that five year window, and then you become eligible. This little more gray area just to get guys in. It's also new. They're just trying to build this metal Hall of Fame. So right, right. It's not as uh, not as as serious. Now, if you if you look at like last year's inductees, <clears throat> um, just I'm not going to throw the names, but um, like Bruce Kulik from Kiss, who's also on Grand Funk Railroad and done some other stuff. Eric Carr is in. Marty Friedman, who uh, – Marty Friedman was in Megadeth for 10 years and his own solo career afterwards. So there's his 20 years of credibility. Doc McGee, manager for multiple bands. Kiss, yes, you all know. over many, many years. Um, and one guy – okay, here's where the uh, contribution – a guy named Derek Riggs. <clears throat> Derek Riggs are going, who the hell's Derek Riggs? <laughs> He's the guy who created Iron Man's Eddie character. I see. So there, his contribution. The Iron cartoon. Man and Eddie have been around for 20 years, therefore qualified. You know, um, things like that. <clears throat> um, Steve Vai is in. He went in in 2020. Satriani's in there. Don Dockin went in, but not the band Dockin. 
Jeff Tate's in, but not Queensryche. Okay. Stephen Piercy's in, but not Rat. Okay. Um, you know, stuff like that. There are some bands in there. Metal Church went in. Prague went in. Um, other individuals who are in. Uh, Anthrax is in as a band. Uh, Frankie Benali's in. Drummer from Quiet Riot, and he did some other stuff. He's in. Uh, Ronnie James Dio's in. Dio wasn't around for 20 years. His time with that Rainbow wasn't 20 years, but Ronnie James has been around for 20 years. Uh, Dave Ellison from uh, Megadeth is in. Local. Local. Local boy. Um, Lita Ford's in. Lizzie Hale is in there. Um, Lemmy is in there. Uh, the band Testament's in there. Judas Priest is there. Jeff Pilson, who started out as a bass player for Dockett and has done other okay. stuff. You know, um, things like that. Billy Sheehan. Uh, Billy Sheehan's in there. Randy Rhodes is in. Rudy Sarzo. The Scorpions. Um, Andy Zeldalden. Uh, he's created the, the symbols that a lot of drummers use. Zildjian, okay. Yep, so he's in there. Uh, Jeff Scott Solo. Now, Jeff Scott Solo, okay, here's one. Okay, he's one of my boys. We're, we're friends on Facebook, by the way, me and Jeff Scott. So. Awesome. Uh, why is he in there? Where do you get his 20 years from? He did the vocals on Ingve Malmsteen's first couple albums. Okay. Uh, for the longest time, he's been with trans Orchestra. He's done vocals for Lita Ford, Steelheart, Striper, Saigon Kick, for a few months, he was actually in Journey for a little bit until they had creative differences. Um, he did some singing with Glass Tiger. Yes, that Glass Tiger. No, don't you forget about me, Glass Tiger. Yep. So he's been in there. So there's his 20 years, five or six with each different band, but 20 years, consistent. Um, and that's what I like about it. You got a lot of solo guys like that in there who have contributed to the industry, if you will. But not all with one band, you know. And what's kind of weird, Bruce is in there, Eric Carr's in there, Gene and Paul aren't. You know. Yeah, you know what? Who else is in there? They take off, I don't know, but the Rainbow Bar and Grill in Hollywood uh, is on Sunset Strip is actually in the Metal Hall of Fame. You know, that's that's Lemmy's hangout. Yeah. A lot of bands came through and, and performed there on mm -hmm. the strip. Um, very interesting. So this is three weeks from tonight, January yeah. 26th. Um, they do it. I think it's the third, it's the third week in January. Every year is the, uh, the new inductions and inductees. They do the celebrity red carpet, the awards, and they have performances in between and, you know, all-star jams and some meet and greets. It's, I think it's a pretty cool event that they do. Now, I don't know for sure, but we'll know as it gets closer, like the celebrity red, red carpet that, Pretty sure that's going to be streamed somewhere. You could watch it online. If you don't go to the Hall of Fame's website, I'm sure a YouTube channel somewhere. Eddie Trunk, if you listen to his show, he'll have stuff as it gets closer. And then I'm sure the next day you'll be able to see YouTube videos, um, you know, yep. TikTok videos, whatever, of uh, performances and things like that. So yep. something to look forward to in the spring. Every year they do that in the wintertime, sorry, third week in January. Uh, but that's all we've got. We just wanted to do an introduction on to the, to the metal hall of fame yes and now get on to some local stuff here some concert information for you here coming up uh with our friends at medina these all four shows in February at medina not a bad one in the bunch deaf legend with heartless opening up starting february 4th uh deaf legend is not a local band they're a national act so seeing them here based is out of right texas from, yes based out of texas so it'll be fun to see them the eleventh Firehouse and Bullet Boys. So there you go. There, twenty-one plus events for that one. Jump, a Van Halen tribute band. Um, I understand they're going under a name change. I don't know why, but um, more on that as we get closer to that day too. February eighteenth, Jump, special guest Arena. And then this one here, the Space Odyssey, a uh, David Bowie tribute. Um, if you're in the David Bowie that. I hear this guy puts on an awesome show. Uh, seeing some of the stuff on YouTube looks really cool. If you're into Bowie, very interesting stuff. 
I think it would be, and I'm I'm not a big David Bowie fan, Andy, but this that would be a good show to to to, uh, to attend. I think. Yep. Yep. It'd be kind of cool. Uh, just a reminder: those who at Target Center, the 19th, 20th, the Rage Against the Machine has been was well, canceled, canceled a while ago. But as we're getting closer, just a little friendly reminder to our Rage Against the Machine fans. XL Energy Center, March 5th, Bruce Springsteen and the E Street Band. Um, I hope you have a lot of money for a really crappy seat there because I guess they're really expensive, but those who like Bruce pay it. So he's got one of those followings, kind of like a Rolling Stones following. You know, They'll, they'll pay uh, $150 to sit in a bad seat. Two months, March 5th. Here we go. If you're into this, U.S. Bank Stadium, Chili Peppers, April 8th. Tickets are on sale now. Okay. Over at La Music Room in St. Michael. Now, this would be kind of a neat show coming up this Saturday. Expedition with it's music of Journey, Foreigner, Kansas, and Styx. All good hard rock bands from the late 70s, early 80s. Exit 205a.com for tickets and info for that one. Yes, and interesting. This facility has all good shows coming up here too now. Uh, January 12th, uh, Honestly, I Love You, Dan. A tribute to Olivia Newton-John and Ann Murray. Perfect. Some people this is, in our age demographics might enjoy this. Might be some closet Olivia Newton-John and Ann Murray fans out there just – not going to name names, but for those of you who are, here's a nice show for you. Interesting. January 13th, Radio Nation, a tribute to the 90s alternative rock. Um, Goo Goo Dolls, Foo Fighters, Oasis, Wallflowers, Matchbox 20, Smashing Pumpkins, No Doubt. And now that more. sounds like an interesting show as well. Yeah, and it's that nice small setting there so it'd be very nice to see just over there in st michael us west metro folks there we know where that is and now i, I mentioned earlier here but mick sterling presents born to run a tribute to bruce springsteen january 14th you don't want to spend the big money to go see him here coming up go see him in a couple weeks here down in st michael okay a new release i got one new release here for you I put okay. a post up on it today on Facebook. Daughtry and Lizzie Hale did a cover separate ways. I tried to listen to it. Uh oh, try. Um, Keyword is tried. I really did. I did not make it to the vocals part of the song. Uh, I, I God bless people who do cover songs. Some of them are good. We do cover bands on this show, Dan. We like cover bands and stuff like that. Yes. I, I like Daughtry. I really do. Lucy Hale's all right. I have never heard a song butchered worse in my life. And that's and that's a fair statement. I think the two singers are good in their own right. Yeah. Doing and, a cover song is a tall feat, and sometimes they just and they tried to make it their own too much. I think on the music part, so I never gave the lyrics a shot because the music drove me insane. I no. Now, we're also gonna, that part so much, I didn't even want to hear the music. We're also going to promote it because there could be some people out there that say, you know what, that's one of the best uh, covers I've ever heard. And, yeah, they may uh, like it. Me personally. There may be people out there. I don't think that I would. I have not heard it, but I think I'm going to fall into your camp. Yeah. Andy, that'd be a tough one to get through. Yeah. And I got one more thing here for you. Just one more thing. Yes. Queen's Bohemian Rhapsody surpasses 2 billion Spotify streams. Oh, billion. Man. Yeah, I think I think it's hard for folks to understand that number. And billion. They have, they have three other songs that are hitting the 1.5 billion stream. Um, Don't Stop Me Now is at 1.46. Another One Bites the Dust, 1.41. And Under Pressure, a duet with David Bowie, at 1.22. Queen, and that song came out in 1975. Obviously, it was not on Spotify right away. No. And this is where I'm saying this right now. And we could use the analogy in sports, too. You cannot compare when they say, 
oh, look at Taylor Swift's last album. She had the top 10 singles. Yeah, because, okay, you know what? Appetite for Destruction comes out in this type of media stream. Every one of those songs is a top 10 song at the same time, too. Because no. we didn't have Spotify then, so Guns N' Roses only had the one song on the radio that was eligible. Not every song on the album eligible for the top 10. So I that, remember in that movie, the documentary movie about uh, the Queen and the, and the stress and the frustration they ran into trying to push this song on the album. And now no. to be uh, rolling in their graves knowing it surpassed 2 billion Spotify streams. I mean, it, to me, and it just shows, and I'm not saying this because of this. I've always thought of this. Freddie Mercury was a musical genius. Yes. Anyone who says no, please unsubscribe, quit following us. We, no, you don't know what you're talking about. But he, Freddie Mercury was, I'm not going to say he was ahead of his time. He just knew what he was doing. He was a little outside the box on his thinking. Yeah. Hence this song and some of the other ones they've done. But it turned out okay for him. I think they did. They made a few bucks. <laughs> he lived He lived in a nice little home, had three hot meals a day. You know. But you, you see these guys every now and then. And I don't want to say some people try to be Freddie Mercury. They want to try to get that bar up there and be him. But he's kind of one of the goals you go to. Is he a Mount Rushmore for a music artist? You can't say that. There's so many different genres and critiques and stuff. No. He would be, because he did some of the writing, not all of it, You know, because Brian May had a lot of say in it, and Roger had some say in it. They all helped with writing. So it wasn't just all Freddie all the time. So... But the way he he was a performer, he, he the Live Aid, like we said before, Queen at Live Aid. I watch that like every couple months, just because you can't see anything different than that. That had to be the best performance ever. Yeah, that is one of the top. It's unreal. I mean, yeah, it was one of those things. You know, everybody says if you can have three people at dinner, who'd you have? If I go to one concert, not the whole Live Aid part. I want to go see Queen. Who's the one act you want to see at Live Aid? Queen. So congratulations them on two a billion. That is unreal. I mean, I, I, I you cannot have to bring around it. That okay. is a lot. That's what I got for the music part today, Dan. If you want, um, I got this information and the Daughtry, Liz Hale stuff. I got that off the 93x.com site. So if you don't want to go, yeah, they always have, you know, they always have good information on their website. Yep. Uh, 93X always has good. If you're a fan or not of the show or the radio program itself, follow their page, their Twitter. Um, they put out pretty good music information all the yep. time. Yeah, they up there. Yeah, I like it. Um, that's all I've got. So we want to we want to send a thank, uh, congratulations once again to the inductees to the Metal Hall of Fame. You know, it's uh. Fun stuff. Maybe we'll uh, fly out there uh, one day and uh, take this in, Andy. But for right now, I think it's good just to promote it, get it out there uh, so yeah. people are aware of it and know what's yeah. going on. Check the next morning and see what's out there. Um, I I'm sure you could live stream it somewhere. Um, I just know if we do go no, if we go next year, Dan, we are not bringing the interns with. No, we can't bring those guys. The way they leave the break room around here. The, the parking lot. They can't uh, clean up after night. themselves. No, we're not bringing them with. They'll run the show when we're on the trip, maybe. Right. Interns. Right. No, wait, no. No, we don't want that either. No. It's a tough It's a tough one. But, I don't even want them dropping me off at the airport, to tell you the truth. No. It's a tough crowd. We're, uh, it, it's always around the holidays. You know, the, the guys are not showing up. The interns are calling mm -hmm. in for the snowstorm. They can't even make it. We're short-staffed, Andy. What? Intern Johnny, he sent his mom the other day because he couldn't make it. So, yeah. ladies and gentlemen, that's what we're dealing with. This is we're struggling here through season four, and and one when we make it one day, yes, we'll go to the Rock and Roll, the Metal Hall of Fame. Yes. All right. We'll have, have a good here. have a good week, everyone. We'll see you back here uh, next Thursday.
See ya. See ya.